The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Boise City Fire Department, Idaho on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36409-01. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on an orientation. Let's start down at the face of the front bumper where you'll find your electronic siren in the cutout area. As you move to the left and right, you'll find additional forward facing lights. Moving now up onto the grill area is where you'll find your removable front grill. Moving now to the headlight structure, low and high beam headlights on the outer edge you'll find a turn indicator. Let's move now to an emergency warning light on the side of the front fender area. Just up from that location you'll find the turn indicator. Just up at the top of the fender area you'll find your air intake. Then as we move up to the top, you'll find your windshield, two windshield wipers, and also you'll find five clearance lights located in the very top section, front of the brow area. Here's some close-ups of that siren that we just talked about, and then also some high intensity lights down in the very bottom section of the face of the bumper. This is the removable grill that you have. It does drop downward. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front grill where you'll find emergency warning lights located on the passenger and driver side. Directly behind the Freightliner logos where you'll find the release mechanism for you to tilt the hood forward. Headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. Forward marker indicator emergency light on the side of the fender panel. As we move to the top section you'll find your turn indicator. As we move to the rear section of the fender you'll find an additional light and then also the release mechanism for the hood. There is one on the passenger side and driver side. Steel wheel, Michelin tires. This is the release mechanism once again. As we move to the cab itself, you'll find flat mirror on the upper portion and a convex mirror on the lower portion. As we move to the cab, easily accessible with a gloved hand, you can grab the door handle, which is a keyed lock, and then also right next to it, you have an additional grab handle. You do have a shoreline power block heater, and then also you have the silver cap, which is your ultra low sulfur diesel. Right next to that is the blue cap, which is your def fill location. As we move to the door panel, you'll find all of our safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, and then also this yellow placard indicating from the manufacturer. This placard has the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation. It also has the VIN number, all of the fluid capacities, fluid types, and also fluid amounts. Let's move now just inside the cab area of the operator's space. At the lower section, you'll find the master battery switch. It is a quarter turn. It's the red switch on the floorboard. Just up from that, when plugged into shoreline power, this is your battery voltage indicator. It will also activate charging your battery. You do have a keyed ignition down in the lower left about the left knee of the operator. And as we move up to the dash area, you'll find an air horn push button. You'll also find all of our speed control for cruise, set and excel, headlights, and also increase and decrease on your speed. As we move just to the right of the dash, you'll find exhaust brake and then also diff lock in the very rear. As we move downward from that location, you'll find your Allison transmission pad, digital readout, and also a push button. Moving just to the right of this location, we have a switch panel located here. At the very top section, you'll find your AM FM weather band radio. Moving down, you'll find your deaf region information. Moving just to the right, you'll find your all wheel drive and also low range, high range switch. At the top section, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. Just beneath that, you'll find additional switching and also tally light information. Moving to the right, we'll find your engine fan. 
mirror heat, electric windows, door locks. As we move further down, you'll find window control in the lower section for the rear section of the cab, 12 volt outlet via barrel style and USB, an additional USB plug-in, and then also a push button air horn. As we move further down on the panel, you'll find your climate control for heat, defrost, and air conditioning. Moving further down, you have an in-cab water tank level indicator, also a digital readout regarding, for example, warning, cab door open. This will display information regarding your vehicle. As we move down, we have additional tally lights and then also an additional 12 volt USB style access point. As we move further on the panel, you'll find these red indicators indicating spare wiring behind the panel. As we move up to the very top, you'll find your PA speaker system and electronic siren. To the rear, you'll find additional resource guide location storage. Let's look to the very front and top section where you'll find your backup camera. This is directly over the driver's seat. Additional information about your vehicle regarding the height of your vehicle, 10 feet, 5 inches, the length of the vehicle, 27 feet, 11 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 40,000 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle that affect this, please update this placard. As we move to the rear wall of the cab, you'll find three forward-facing seats. As we move to the very outside at the rear section of the crew cab, a D-handle gains you access into this space, and then also in the upper portion, you'll find a shoreline inlet. Let's move now to the door panel where you'll find a fixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, grab handle for gaining access, and then on the pedestal itself, additional storage underneath the seat area. Let's go ahead and move exterior directly behind the cab area where you'll find your engine protection line. Moving up from this location, you'll find the number three discharge, ball valve locally controlled inch and a half, and then also the booster line on the driver's side, locally controlled via a ball valve. There are two clamp locations on this side for equipment, and then also a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. Also a warning placard indicating pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening them. As we move up, this is the rest of the bracket holding system for your long-handled tool storage. As we move to the very top section, you'll find your emergency warning light bar, and then also the hose reel located in the very top section. This is the driver side. There is an additional on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and move through some of the compartments now. Let's start at the very front compartment. This is directly over the real area or below the real area. You'll find adjustable shelving, LED lighting, and ventilation inside the compartment. You also have a pull-down strap in the upper portion of the compartment. As we move to the bottom section, I would like to point out this door does open downward. This is not a step area and is not intended to be utilized as a step. As we move inside the compartment, dry deck material, LED lighting, and then also the real rewind for your booster line. As we move to the next compartment, LED lighting, adjustable shelving, and then also that upper portion strap for being able to pull the compartment downward. As we move to the rear axle, you'll find Michelin tires and steel wheels. There is an additional compartment just to the rear of the rear axle. It does house all of your folding wheel chocks. Let's go ahead and take a look to the rear of the apparatus where you'll find the rear bumper and also a side facing emergency warning light. Let's move up to the top where you'll find additional lighting, side facing scene lighting, and then also emergency warning lights. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the compartment here. This is at the very rear of the driver's side. You have a foam flush valve, then also a foam tank shutoff valve. Moving up to the very top, you'll find the winch located on the upper portion in this image. 
And then as we move around to the rear of the apparatus, we'll identify a few items within this area. First, let's start with the step located on the left-hand side. This will swing if it is impacted by the ground. As we move up from this location, brake, turn, and reverse lights, lower section emergency warning light, and a step. Also, you'll have a cutout here for your backup alarm. Moving just to the right, you'll find a locally controlled ball valve discharge, two and a half inch. Let's move up from this location. We do have some warning placards regarding crush injury because of the spare tire and also a step and license plate holder. As we look to the very top section, you'll find additional emergency warning lights and at the top, a rear facing scene light. Let's go ahead and move down to the very bottom section where you're gonna find additional attachment points. As we move up, D-handle gains access into the smaller compartment in the rear and then also a low faux discharge as we move upward to the top, you'll find the draft location, two and a half inch ball valve. As we move to the right, some warning label placards information here regarding only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and that's only after proper training. We do have a warning regarding pressure hazard, caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening. We have an additional discharge here, this is an inch and a half locally controlled ball valve. As we move to the top, we have instructions here regarding the diesel water pump operation guide. And then at the top, we have a low voltage indicator. And to the right, we have an audible speaker. This is an audible alarm, allowing it to brighten or dampen the sound by simply rotating the outer edge of the bezel. As we move down, this is your Darley pump panel for starting and also increase or decrease of throttle. To the right, we have your vacuum and pressure these are test gauge ports. They're currently plugged and are for testing purposes. As we move down, we have the air outlet and then also the brake, turn, and reverse light. Moving up to the top, this is the Watrous system, the aqueous. In regards to this, you have the water tank level indicator and a foam level tank indicator. We do have a placard here from Pierce Manufacturing indicating your pump information and GPM and PSI information. We do have a master pump discharge gauge located here, and then also a discharge electric valve. This will control the tank to pump. Just to the right, you'll find the foam system from Watrous also. Let's move up to the very top in the center where you'll find your backup camera. You'll also find the engine exhaust for your pump. The next set of images are going to be from the top portion of the vehicle. This is a top fill water location. As we move to the rear of the apparatus, you'll find the top fill location for your foam tank A. I would like to point out on the tank there is a warning regarding do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. We have additional hatch compartments on the driver and passenger side. This is that foam warning label that I previously mentioned. As we look into the top, we do have a walking surface in the very top section of the vehicle. As we move to the outer edge, you can see the discharge pipe running to the very rear section of the apparatus. This is the driver's side booster reel. As we move around, we'll find the passenger side booster reel. Emergency warning light bar located at the rear section of the cab. As we move inside, we do have an additional compartment located here for access. This is the location for your winch. As we move around now to the passenger side of the vehicle, we'll identify a few of the items within the compartments, first starting with mud flaps at the very rear of the apparatus, steel wheels, and also Michelin tires. D-handle gains us access into the rear. The compartment layout is virtually the same as it is on the driver's side.
As we move forward now in the compartments, we'll find once again adjustable shelving, LED lighting, Moving forward, the lower compartment has just above that is the real rewind push button switch. And then also that door does drop in the downward position. Once again, not intended as a stepping surface. As we move forward to this location between the body and the cab is where we'll identify the rest of the plumbing on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and start with that next. As we move to the lower section, this is going to be your draft two and a half inch ball valve locally controlled. As we move upward, you'll find the discharge number three locally controlled inch and a half ball valve. As we move further up, you'll find the booster ball valve. This is going to be for your booster line. And then we have some additional warning placards regarding entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. Also a warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move out, we have additional latch mechanism here or storage latches uh, for additional tools. Exhaust located on the passenger side rear of the cab door. As we move to the step, two D handles gains us access into this storage space. And then we'll go ahead and move back into the cab area. This is going to be the rear section of the cab. Affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock, and also window control. As we move now into the officer space, you'll find affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, air ride seat inside for comfort control. As we move to the, once again, the door panel, safety and warning placard information, grab handle, door lock and latch, and window controls. Front tire, once again, Michelin steel wheel. As we move around to the front fender, at the rear of the fender is the release mechanism to gain access to the hood. Also a turn indicator at the top section, forward facing emergency warning light on the side of the fender, and your headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. Front bumper section located here, Congratulations, Boise City Fire Department, Idaho, on your new Pierce fire apparatus, job number 36409. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.